All right, so let's do the clamshell shakedown. So the clamshell is this exercise, it's beloved in fitness circles, where you are in a sideways position and you're gonna to work to raise the top leg off of the bottom one. And I've got a couple of variations lined up for us. Um, I'm going to use a band on many of these. That's optional, but I'm gonna cue with it because I think it's a nice way to kind of amplify what we're doing. So we're gonna start by coming into what I think of like as a side sit, and then you're gonna find your way onto your elbow. I'm gonna give you a couple pointers, then we're gonna add the band and get started. But as we do this, you do have the option, if it's not comfortable for your elbow or your shoulder, to come all the way lower. You might support yourself with a arm tucked underneath your head, or you might even use a blanket there. Um, as we do this, I wouldn't work on like coming up very high with the torso. So an elbow support is where you're going to find me most of the time. So I'm going to try to keep the shoulder steady, meaning I'm not going to sink into it. The other factor with this is the rib cage. And it might seem kind of like a funny detail to add into this, but it's actually really important for those of us with um, low back issues that we don't end up really leaning sideways into this low back scoliosis, essentially. So you're in the sideways curve in your lumbar pretty profoundly. It's not harmful. It's not dangerous. It's not injurious. It's just that for a lot of us, we kind of have this habit of slouching sideways anyway. So what I'm thinking of here is this top rib cage, the side that's facing the ceiling here, it's my left. I'm gonna lift that up and I'll remind us of that a couple of times. That's the general setup for the first few of these. So I'm gonna slip my band here, this loop above my knees by a couple of inches. You should adapt with that so that you can use it in a place where you're getting a useful amount of tension. You could even use two. You could start with a lighter one, move to a heavy one, vice versa. You know how this goes, you adapt as you go along. So onto the elbow or an entirely sideline position, I'm going to have my knees into a bend. I'm not gonna bring here them so high towards my chest. I'm not gonna flex my hips so deeply that I'm then compelled to flex into my lumbar. It's a gentle flexion, both at the back of the knees and the front of the hips. And in that way, I'm not tucking my tailbone under here. I'm getting that length. And again, left ribs are gonna look towards the ceiling. All right, I'm gonna start with this one with my free hand, my left hand, I'm gonna put the heel of my hand just to the back of that hip socket area and raise and lower the top knee a few good times here. Pardon me for this, it's my big um, caveat when I'm teaching. I don't count these off. So if we do an unequal amount from side to side, you can always even that off on your own. But with the back of my hip getting kind of pressurized from the heel of my hand, I can make sure that when I lift my leg, I'm not doing some of that leg lift, then watch this, more of pelvic turning. So I'm really staying pretty stable here across my pelvis, though I'm moving from that hip socket. So the heel of my hand at the back of my hip is essentially pushing forward so I don't roll back in order to raise that knee. All right, let's flip to the other side. We're gonna kind of just flip flop from A to B a couple of times here. So make that transition a useful one to you again. I'm gonna be on my shoulder, you can come all the way down. If you're on your, excuse me, I'm on my elbow, but make sure that you're not sinking into the shoulder in any scenario. And then here it's my right ribs. I'm gonna to work to lift those towards the ceiling, heel of the hand just behind that hip socket. And I'm pressing forward towards the camera so that as I go through this, I know that I'm not lifting partially and then kind of completing the task by rolling in my pelvis. And I find this when I work um, that it's like, a, there's a lot to organize, though you only see one thing moving. And that's, you know, that's a lot of what I teach. It's deceptive. <laughs> Looks like a clamshell, but there's also like this core strengthening component, this pelvic stability. And again, always forever, if we do an uneven amount from side to side, hit pause, level it off, or spend more time on the side that needs more work. All right, loves, let's go back to side one. So we did the classic, which is taking the knee um, off of the bottom leg, and we kept the ankles closed. On the second one, ribs away from the floor, shoulder stable. I'm gonna take the whole leg up and down. And as I go with this, takes me a couple to kind of get my choreography. It's not knee, then ankle, and then knee, then ankle kind of wobbling the, on the way up, but really trying to lift that whole leg as one, oh, that was a better one, solid unit. 
and I'm just coming straight on up. Same thing as before. I'm going to put the heel of my free hand oh, on the back of my hip. This one's a good one. And I'm pressing forward to prevent myself from twisting around my low back and pelvis to kind of mask the edge of this, which is always difficult. And the height's not massively important, but the levelness is on this one, meaning like there's no need to take your ankle really high or your knee really high. Try to take the whole thing up and down. And again, the, the height at the top, you'll figure that out for yourself, but we're going for the levelness. Oh, tough one. All right, let's do the other side. <laughs> Steady on your shoulder or coming lower. Think about this rib cage not slinking down towards the floor just for the sake of developing some core stability. We're going to lift those right ribs towards the ceiling, heel of my hand, the back of my hip pressing forward towards the camera. And then from here, whole leg up and down. You know, and I'm looking to this both on screen, but then also I might, you know, every once in a while, I'll just kind of take my eyes from the screen and watch myself. But when I do that, I want to make sure, and I say this for anybody who does these things visually, that you are not hunching your way over, craning your head forward in order to do this. Okay, a few more on the second side, whole leg up and down. Oh, that one wasn't so level. I'll give myself one or two here just to, to do and to watch. All right, last one. Oof. All right, back to the first side. From here, the band is a little bit less impactful for me. Um, if your band is different, your body's different, it might be more useful to you. But I'm going to take this down to, say, mid calves. And I might edit that once we get into it. On this clamshell, let's see, I probably like that. So you want it on your lower leg, but how close to the ankle or knee? I'll leave that to your discretion as you play with this. Once more, steady shoulder, not sinking, ribs lifting up, and I'm gonna keep my knees close. Now, I guess I need that closer towards the ankles. This would be a nice moment for a smaller band, but I don't have one, so this will do. Okay, there we go. <laughs> All right, so my knees are closed and I'm lifting that top leg. And because this band is sort of slack for my, my ankle distance, I don't get that tension until the last little couple of degrees of this, but that's fine, well and good. All right, on this one, because this is an internal rotation, your leg is turning in to lift the foot, you're gonna make sure that you're not turning forward like navel towards floor. So I'm gonna take my fingers, hold around that frontal hip point and pull back gently, a steadying force. Oosh, as I get a couple more of these in, maybe a little closer to the ankle. Yeah, I'm gonna keep my eyes peeled for a small band one day. All right, a couple more of these. Lifting that top side of the rib cage, top side meaning facing the ceiling towards the ceiling itself, pressing the elbow down. Maybe you're all the way sideways recumbent on the floor, but you're gonna ooh, steady that shoulder if you're propped up on the elbow. Okay, other side. So in the end, it's closer towards the ankles for me. Your band, your bod might work out differently. On my elbow, making sure my shoulder is not ending up on the side of my skull, taking that side rib cage, inflating towards the ceiling, and then with fingers around that frontal hip point, this is not like a move that I'm trying to create with that hand. It's more like I'm preventing anything else from going on. And again, due to the slackness, of this band. I don't get that tug, that resistance until that last degree. That's fine. With the lower leg lifting, you're turning the leg in. So you're preventing the pelvis from rolling forward. <laughs> These are not simple. That last little kick at the end is pretty impactful on the outside of that hip. All right, a couple more on this. Last version where the top leg is bent. You know what, I'm gonna edit that and say, we'll do a couple more bent leg versions. I'll line them up right here so we can kind of stay well organized. All right, one for the road. Oh, okay, so back to the other side. You will either repeat the first few things that we just did, or you're gonna add 
a little extra flare. So what that will be, and this has to be done on the elbow. So if that's a non-negotiable thing, like you cannot prop yourself up this way, you're gonna go back to being all the way sideways and repeating what we first did. Otherwise you're on your elbow and you're gonna press down and you're gonna do that to lift your pelvis from the floor. And then we're gonna couple that pelvic lift with a few more of these clamshells. I'm doing these faster because they're so much harder. <laughs> so the first one, again, the classic feet or ankles are connected. I'm actually stepping my top foot on the top of my bottom one, just as like a little extra steadying here. And then again, as I have this, it's the knee up and down. Am I sinking probably? Last couple, I'm gonna try to lift that pelvis an inch or two higher. Two, three, four, up to five. And then, oh, let's come on down. Let's move around to the other side. If you're on the elbow, try lifting the pelvis. If not, you don't, but you keep on moving. All right, this is my harder side, I already know that. So elbow down, ribs lifting, and then let's get that pelvis off the floor. <laughs> <laughs> All right, and then we'll do a set of that classic clamshell right here. So you established already that you know you're not sinking into your shoulder. You're performing that with greater load on it right now. Let's do five, oh, four, lift the pelvis, three, two, last one. All right, and then we'll come on down. <laughs> All right, so just remixing it with the pelvic lift. So on the elbow and up with the pelvis. <laughs> and then the second one is the whole leg lifting. And again, the height of it on this one, I think you can kind of just work within a, an acceptable range, but you know, a moderate range. But as you go through this, look for the levelness. So it's not a wobble to raise and lower. She said if she wobbles, ugh, but something a little bit more level from knee to ankle. Three, <laughs> two, and last one. Ooh, and then there we go. Left side on your elbow or you're all the way down. You're lifting your pelvis or you're not. Options galore. Elbow presses, ribs inflate towards the ceiling, pelvis up, and let's get this version in here. So really working here not to like take that into what I'm just calling a wobble for lack of a better word, but ankle and knee lift at the same moment. Ooh. And they tap down at the same moment, theoretically. Last couple were a little shaggy. <laughs> Let's do three, two, one. And then we come on down. So we're gonna try that last one at the ankles. So it's the internal rotation. And again, if this all just comes together in a way that's not giving you the oomph that you desire, you can come up with a, your personal iteration of it, but same idea. And again, this one's like, I don't get that little kick right until the end, but I'll use it. So elbow presses, shoulder down, ribs inflate, up with the damn pelvis <laughs> off the floor. Yeah, this one's always a little funny. And then taking the ankle up, knee stays down. You know what, there's enough in here for me not to discard this one. I always, when I approach it, I think, is it gonna have anything to it? But it really does, it really does. All right, five, four, three, two, to this last one, Ooh, and then we'll come on down switcheroo. So you might've noticed I'm not cueing that top hand to push or pull in the pelvis. The stakes have been raised, you're floating in the air. It's not as likely that you're gonna like shimmy and twist because that's more to resolve. So you're a little bit more steady, like it or not. <laughs> right, elbow presses, ribs lift, pelvis lifts, band towards the ankles. And we'll get a few in here where the foot lifts, knees stay pinned. Whew. 
Ugh. And then the range is small on this one. But again, when I get to that tension on the band, I really try to push right into it. Let's get our five, four, <laughs> three, two, to our final one. All right, and then we'll come on down. All right, so from side to side we go. That's really the name of the game on this one. Back up around the thighs, a little higher than the knees. Again, you could be doing any and all of this with no band. And we're gonna go back to having the pelvis anchored. This time we're gonna have the uh, top leg straight. So my foot's just off camera, but there's nothing fancy going on there. So I still have this a few inches above my knees. This time I'm gonna go back to placing the heel of my hand, the back of my hip and pelvis. And it's essentially the same thing, but the leg is straight. So let's come into a few of these. And again, with this, I'm gonna make sure that when the leg comes up, that that's the pure action I'm looking for that I then don't kind of like amplify things by rolling front to back. And could ya, would ya lift your ribs away from the floor? This can be done entirely sideline for those of us who are thinking that the shoulder becomes a distraction. I feel ya. You could do this all the way sideways. Let's do three and two and last one. All right, flip to the other side. I'm gonna describe something with a little bit more detail, but let's just set ourselves up. Top leg straight. Your legs are at an angle. This is not a fixed thing. You could have your legs further back. You could have them flexed in front. This is sort of like a middle ground. And I think it's a totally great place to start things off. It does catch the outside of the hip pretty wonderfully but remix this if you want to. So let's get into a few of these. I'm gonna chit chat with one more thing here. So I've got the heel of my free hand, the back of my hip, and I'm pressing forward to kind of monitor that I'm not turning back in order to raise the leg. Cause it works to a degree. Like if I turn back, that top leg has to come with me. All right, part two of this is that when you're thinking about lifting the ribs, were you? I wasn't, but might as well now, that you're gonna be a little bit less inclined to do this. I'm gonna point with my finger that when the leg comes up, the ribs come down. And it's more like you're doing like the side crunch on the rib cage, not bad, just not what we're doing. So as you keep those ribs lifted, oh, that's so much harder. <laughs> that you really identify that you're using this outer hip and not so much like a spinal sideways, snaky sort of move. Another good thing to do with your body, but just not the one we're doing today. I think that's enough of these, one. <laughs> Let's go ahead and come back down. Let's from here either repeat or add the lifted pelvis. Leg comes out and one and we'll keep going. And on this one again, you're just a little bit less inclined to kind of shake and shimmy with the pelvis. So check, we resolve that by raising the stakes but I wonder if you're going to drop and lower from the rib cage or the pelvis, sorry to keep sliding around here, um, and see if you can keep what's on the floor stable and that everything else is coming up. Let's do three and then two. Oh my gosh, shaking. And last one. All right, down you go, down you go. Come on over. All right, so either repeat straight leg, pelvis on the floor, or add the lift. All right, so my top leg goes out, elbow presses down, and actually, whether I cued this or not, your bottom knee is pressing down. And that's actually part of the hip strengthening move here. All the attention goes to that moving leg, but this bottom hip too is assisting you. All right, so we'll get our few in here. And if you find that you're sliding to the position of the elbow and the knee, they're not fixed, you can move them. I'm just gonna kick mine back a little bit so I don't slip slide on out of this. Let's go for three. <laughs> These are so hard. Two for me. <laughs> and one, and we'll come all the way back on down oh my goodness oh my gosh 
All right, so from this, we're gonna go back to first slide, no surprise there. And on this time, we're gonna do one more of that straight leg lift. So this will be our last set. And I want you to change the angle, right? So I've been sort of like half flexed, meaning here, my legs are straight behind me or straight alongside me, they're not behind me. Um, and then here is a full flexion pretty much that would make sense for this exercise where my legs are going straight ahead towards the camera. So I'm gonna go back. So if I was here to do all of these, I'm actually gonna take my legs, both of them as you could have seen, like that's not just the one. I'm swinging them back slightly. They're not exactly in line with the rest of my body. That would be here. So they're gonna be just forward of that. That's calling my name. If you wanna try it taking it forward, you're welcome to it. But I wanted you to change the angle for this last one. Elbow presses, ribs lift up, and then you're gonna get a few in here. And these have their own you know, flavor and spice. I'd say that, just to kind of report how it's different for me, I do feel a little bit more, um, what's to say, resistance, stiffness on the front of my thigh and hip here as my legs go back. So I'm a little bit more extended. And so my hip flexors have to lengthen to negotiate that. And you, me, and everyone we know and love, we are generally flexing our hips all day. So anytime you move away from 90 degrees of flexion, it's a little bit odd. Um, three, <laughs> two, and ones. That's just a variable change. All right, let's get last time, last side on this clamshell shakedown. Um, I know I've probably given you these exercises in other ways and other places before, but here's just like a neat little packaging of them in case that's of use to you. All right, so I was about here. I'm gonna take both of these legs and move them back towards the bookshelves, the curtain behind me. And in that way, I'm less flexed, more extended. I'm not in hip extension. I've just reduced the flexion. Elbow presses, ribs lift. And then I'm gonna go up and down for a good set here. And on this one as well, you're gonna make sure that you are not taking the ribs down to take the leg up and then changing that. That's kind of like that teeter-totter seesaw, you know, that simple lever system uh, that's a toy in a playground, that instead you're keeping ribs up, oh, and asking that leg to lift as well. So you're not sneaking in like a spinal compensation for your hips difficulty in making this movement. Oh, she said as she did the exact compensation she described. All right, three, uh, two, and then one, come on down. Let's come on to our backs, just the reclining version. We'll do a quick set here. Set your feet wide enough for tension, and we're gonna keep the right leg stable, tip the left leg out, 10, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, to the last one. And you're gonna hold it there. And again, this right leg stays totally stable, never gets knocked around, but you're gonna pull that left leg out any amount further. Are you tucking your tailbone and could you roll your tail towards the floor? Is that different? Is the whole kitten caboodle twisting you over towards the left? That wouldn't be too weird. Could you aim your navel by two inches towards the right? All right, let's call that left leg back in. Left leg is absolutely still, and right leg goes out for 10, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, to the last one, rare occasion of counting them off, the full set. Okay, we're gonna stay here for a second. And left leg is resolute, goes nowhere. Right leg presses out any further amount, can it, would it, will it? 
And then notice that the whole thing, all this tension is just pulling your whole body towards a right word roll. Get your left shoulder to the floor and get your navel to look two inches towards the left across your ceiling space. Oh, and then we'll take that back in. Inhale, exhale, and you're good. That's it. That's our little remix of our clamshell classic. Hope that is a useful set for you.